move to the next one. Good evening. And I'd like to call our Tuesday, November 20th, 2018, Piqua City Commission meeting to order. Let us stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Can we have our roll call, please? Mayor Hines. Here. Commissioner Martin. Here. Commissioner Vote. Here. Commissioner Lee. Here. Commissioner Short. Here. Okay, the first thing on our agenda is the oath of office for the Piqua Fire Department Fire Captain Christopher James Black, if you'll come forward to the podium. Just raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Christopher Black. Solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear or affirm. That I will obey the Constitution. That I will obey the Constitution. And laws of the United States. And laws of the United States. And of the state of Ohio. And of the state of Ohio. That I will in all respects. That I will in all respects. Observe the provisions. Observe the provisions. Of the charter and ordinances. Of the charter and ordinances. Of the city of Piqua. Of the city of Piqua. And faithfully discharge. And faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of fire captain. The duties of the office of fire captain. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, and we welcome you. And I believe your family is here today, so we give thanks for your family and um, the ways they keep the uh, fire burning at. Well, I guess I shouldn't say fire. So <laughs> let me let me rephrase that. They keep things going at home. Um, we give thanks for for you allowing him to work with us and to do the good work that he does for our city. It's wonderful to have you all here tonight as well. Do we have any announcements? Who is your dad? Jim. Sitting right here. Okay. <laughs> know him? No, it's a different gym. <laughs> it's just, huh? I work with you. You're the gym out at Goodrich? I didn't recognize you. Okay. I'm still here. Please? <laughs> there you go. If we have no announcements, we will move to our consent agenda then. The consent agenda consists of one item tonight, approval of the minutes from the November 6, 2018 regular city commission meeting. I move we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the consent agenda passes. And now we move to old business. The, we only have one item. It is ordinance number 15-18. It's a second reading. An emergency ordinance amending chapter 33 of the Pickle Municipal Code employment policy. Ms. Wall will provide the staff report. Thank you. This ordinance was amended at the request of the city commission to clarify the language. It did not substantively change any of the ordinance. It did put uh, what appeared to be the language that was um, not as clear in chart form rather than just leaving it in word form to clarify uh, the purpose of the ordinance. Okay. Now this, this is basically cut and dry. Can we eliminate the third reading on this? Yes, you can. I move we eliminate the, uh, the third reading rule. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor of eliminating the third reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have done that. And now the ordinance stands before us. I move, I move we adopt ordinance number 15-18. Second. Um, before we do that, is there anybody in the public that wants to speak to this ordinance? Okay, if not, we have a, it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the ordinance passes. And now we move to our new business. And the first is ordinance number 16-18. This is a first reading. 
an ordinance repealing Schedule A of Chapter 33 of the PICWA Code and adopting a new Schedule A of Chapter 33 of the PICWA Code relating to wages of certain municipal employees. Ms. Holtz-Apple will provide the staff report. Thank you. Schedule A covers the salaries of the full-time non-union employees at the city. For 2019, we're proposing that each step be increased by 2%. This is the same percentage increase that has been given to all other employees of the city, and this may stand as the first reading. Great. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this ordinance? Any questions or comments from the public on this ordinance? If not, this will stand as our first reading. And now we move to ordinance number 17-18. This is also a first reading. An ordinance repealing Schedule A-1 of Chapter 33 of the PICWA Code and adopting a new Schedule A-1 of Chapter 33 of the PICWA Code relating to wages of certain municipal employees. Ms. Holtzapp. Thank you. Schedule A-1 covers part-time, seasonal, and temporary employees of the city. The wages for certain employees will be adjusted in accordance with the State of Ohio minimum wage requirements. Currently, the minimum wage is $8.30 an hour. That moves in 2019 to $8.55 an hour. Specific titles are also requested change for next year, include the harvest operator and seasonal green superintendent. Those have been added to reflect specific seasonal details. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this ordinance? So does that mean we won't have a green superintendent all year long just during the summer? The seasonal green superintendent <laughs> is scheduled for about a nine to uh, 11 month period typically. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from the public on this ordinance? If not, this will stand as our first reading. And now we move to ordinance number 18-18. This is also a first reading. In, <clears throat> excuse me. An ordinance repealing existing chapter 33.08 and enacting a new chapter 33.08 of the PICWA code relating to employee insurance. Ms. Holtap. This ordinance updates Chapter 33.08 of the PICWA Code to set the new benefit year <coughs> for all employees' health insurance to 2019. No other changes are provided in that section. Okay. Any questions or comments from the Commission on this ordinance? Any questions or comments from our public on this ordinance? If not, this will stand on the first reading of this ordinance. And now we move to ordinance number 19-18. This is also a first reading. An ordinance to make appropriations for the city of Piqua, Ohio for the year 2019. This is the first of three readings of the appropriation ordinance for 2019. This ordinance is to be presented and passed by the end of December of each year. The commissioners have reviewed in detail the department budgets, which was held last Tuesday, November 13th. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this ordinance? Any questions or comments from our public on this ordinance? If not, this will stand as our first reading of ordinance number 19-18. <coughs> And now we move to ordinance number 20-18. This is also a first reading. An ordinance amending section 154.025B, General Business District of the City of Piqua Code of Ordinances. I'll call on Mr. Schmeezing. Thank you. The uh, proposed amendment will amend the B, General Business section of the zoning code to include hospitals as a principal permitted use type within the subject zoning district. Currently, the zoning code limits hospital uses to be located in only the R2 and R3 residential zoning districts. Uh, with reference to the traffic volume and use intensity typically generated by a hospital, uh, the use type much better aligns with the purpose and intent of the B general business zoning district. Uh, for this reason, uh, it has been suggested that the code be amended to acknowledge the suitability of this use type 
within the subject zoning district, uh, a review of the comprehensive plan and zoning code by the Planning Commission, uh, and testimony provided at a public hearing before the Planning Commission uh, resulted in the Planning Commission finding that the request is consistent with the adopted land use policies and plans and uh, their recommendation for approval. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the Commission on this ordinance? Any questions or comments from the public on this ordinance? If not, this will stand as the first reading of Ordinance Number 20-18. And now we move to Resolution Number R-142-18. A resolution approving the purchase of part of in lot 43. Mr. Smeezing. Thank you. This uh, relates to the riverfront uh, redevelopment strategy. Uh, this particular structure is located on a 0.15 acre track of property known as part of in lot 43. Uh, the structures themselves are currently in a state of blight and uh, not all that uh, usable in terms of redevelopment potential. Uh, so the intent is for these structures to be demolished. Uh, this would facilitate uh, the redevelopment of the site in support of the private sector activity we anticipate happening at some of the properties in this area. We've uh, included in the packet a uh, purchase agreement that's been negotiated with the property owner, uh, and the property owner is ready to proceed with closing. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from our public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move we adopt a resolution R-142-18. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-143-18. A resolution approving the purchase of part of in lot one. Mr. Smeezing. Here too, the uh, interest in the property is related to the redevelopment of the riverfront area. Uh, the structure in this case is located on a 0.9 acre track of property known as part of in lot one. Uh, the structure will be demolished and assembled. Uh, the land will be assembled with other lots that have previously been purchased by the city. Uh, again, this is in anticipation of private sector development interest uh, and facilitating the investment that we expect will come with that. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move to adopt resolution R-143-18. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-144-18. A resolution authorizing a one-year lease with Dream Builders Group Incorporated. Ms. Wall. Thank you. This is a request for a renewal from Dream Builders Group. It is operated through the Clubhouse program, which is out of Ginghamsburg Church. They used, uh, beginning in December of last year, the Moat Park building for after school program for um, two purposes. One, serving children for after school programs, but the second purpose is to develop team leaders. Mm -hmm. And the resolution indicates how many um, children participated in those programs. And then they were open throughout the summer um, for various programs for children who needed it. My understanding is there were no problems using the Moat Park building, no interference with any city needs at that time um, and it's being recommended that the renewal be granted okay any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution i'm noticing that it served 31 children with 26 teen leaders participating as well so those are nice numbers um, something definitely needed in our community any questions or comments from the public on this resolution if not we'll entertain a motion I'll make a motion for resolution R-144-18 second has been moved and seconded all those in favor say aye. aye aye opposed the resolution passes and now we move to resolution number R-145-18 a resolution authorizing the sale of city-owned real estate we'll go back to Mr. Smeezing 
Uh, this time we're selling property and instead of purchasing. Uh, this comes from the adjoining property owner of the uh, former Bennett School site, which the city recently acquired. Uh, the property owners requested to purchase an eight foot wide strip of land owned by the city of Piqua. The subject portion of the land is uh, part of the, as I mentioned, the former Bennett School track. Uh, the property owner's intention is to be able to make driveway improvements to their property located at 611 South Main Street. Uh, it's interesting to notice that to note that previously on land survey records, this eight-foot strip was once prior, uh, previously part of 611 South Main Street, uh, and had been split off and given to the school. So now it's going back uh, to its original status. Uh, we again have negotiated with the property owner the fair market value. Uh, they've completed the survey work necessary for the uh, transaction documents to be prepared. And here again, we're ready to move forward with closing upon your authorization. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. Move we adopt resolution R-145-18. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-146-18. A resolution authorizing amendment to the zoning map to change the zoning designation of 1130 Garvey Road being parcels N-44077662 N44251015, N44077664, N44077666, N44077668, and N44257 from OS Open Space to be general business. Mr. Smeezy. Thank you. Uh, with the uh, recent construction activity on the east side of town, uh, the property owner has been approached with uh, an interest in the property, uh, and they, they too have recognized the development potential for this site. Uh, they've asked that the property be rezoned in recognition of this uh, development interest uh, from the current OS zoning status to B general business zoning status, which would be consistent with the uh, land use and zoning types surrounding the property. Uh, it's worth noting that the rezoning includes not only the property owned by the property owner, but also several parcels that lay underneath the I-75 uh, highway easement. Uh, they're all OS and everything else around it is B, so they're included in this request. Uh, the uh, Planning Commission uh, received the request, uh, did hold a public hearing on the matter, heard from the applicant uh, and their interest in, in seeing this rezoning go through, uh, and there was no one present to speak in opposition to the request, uh, so the Planning Commission subsequently recommended approval of this. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move to adopt resolution uh, R146-18. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-147-18. An emergency resolution for consent to amend a contract with LJB Incorporated for the design of the Commercial Street Utilities Project. Before I call on Mr. Shelley, I just want to uh, state that the next two items, 13 and 14, are additional costs on the Commercial Street Project that we believe that these costs have been caused by Vectran, and it is my intent to pursue replacement of the funds with Vectran uh, once we pay, the, uh, pay these accordingly. So uh, we will be pursuing that with Vectran in the future. Mr. Thank Shelley. You. The engineering and construction management services for the Commercial Street Utility Project are being provided by LJB Incorporated. <coughs> Once construction began, our construction contractor found several gas conflicts that were not <coughs> on the design plans. These included an unmarked gas line found on South Street, three unmarked gas lines found at the intersection of Roosevelt and Grant, an unmarked gas line found near the intersection of Commercial and Young Streets, and an unmarked gas line found at the intersection of Roosevelt and Young. 
Each of these gas conflicts created additional engineering and construction management work for LJB. Additional drawings had to be produced for two of the conflicts and a senior member of LJB's staff had to visit the site for data gathering purposes. LJB has requested an additional $5,000 be added to their contract, 1,000 of which is a contingency in case we find future conflicts. Uh, the additional monies will pay for the design and construction management services that these gas conflicts created. Um, I would add on what, what Gary put, uh, put into the record. My contract with Vectron has told us that LJB went through the proper channels when requesting gas line locations during the design phase. Vectron, however, was in the middle of a procedure change in how they managed those requests and LJBs were not processed appropriately and that's how we've gotten to this point. Are there any questions I can answer? Any questions or comments from the commission? No, they've done work on these on Commercial Street over the last couple of years with the paving and everything. Why did these lines turn up? Didn't it, weren't they marked before at all? That's correct. They weren't marked. Uh, Vectran was supposed to provide those markings and failed to do so. Okay, now we, we've redone the sewer line, the storm sewer line down that road, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. As part and, of that, and yes. And we run into their gas lines. We found those gas lines as we were doing the construction, which caused us both design and construction additional costs. Now, has Vectran, in the meantime, have they redone those lines? I think most of them they have. If they I'm not are mistaken. done. They are done, okay. They finished yesterday. Yeah, okay. And now, now we won't have to worry about Vectran digging us up again after we get it done. That should be the case. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. Let me ask a question oh, real yeah. quick. Does Vectran, did Vectran admit to you at all or to anybody at all that they were having this conflict when they were changing the, the process? Well, we found out that uh, during the construction as we contacted Vectran that uh, through our consultant that they didn't, they didn't mark the lines, they didn't identify them properly, right? I don't think even Vectran knew they were there, quite honestly. Well, they were getting the money though, weren't they? No, some, somebody was, yeah. So are we going to have to sue them or? Well, we're going to we're going we're to pursue it, and uh, we have a good working relationship with Vectra, and I would hope that they understand that uh, these, these not, should not be costs that the city has to exactly. incur for their mistake. Just temporarily. We do what we have to do. That's right. Okay. Um, this is listed as an emergency resolution, so I would need a motion. Um, Actually, I guess I don't need an emotion for no. that because it's, yeah, because it's not an ordinance. So. I move to adopt resolution RF 147-18. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-148-18. <coughs> an emergency resolution for consent to add a change order to the contract with Milcon Concrete Incorporated for the construction of the Commercial Street Utilities Project. And this is for the construction part. Mr. Shelley. Thank you. Um, Milcon is our contractor on this job and they have requested an additional $51,832 in order to complete the work. Um, much of of that money has to do with the gas conflicts that we just discussed. Um, I have quite a list of, of change orders. Um, I don't really need to go through those unless you want me to. Uh, to, to suffice it to say, um, we're in the process of, of going through these change orders with our construction management team. Um, once um, Milcon is back on site, they'll do this work and, and we request this money in order to, to pay them in full. I would like to say that you may have noticed work has stopped along Commercial Street. Um, we have had a two and a half week stop because we were waiting for Vectran to 
to move these gas lines. So part of this, this change order is a, a demobilization and a remobilization fee. Milcon had to move their equipment off to attend to other work. I'm told that they're going to be back on site on the 26th of November with an anticipated project completion of December 15th. And as you said earlier, um, we're going to look at Vectran for absolutely yeah. any costs associated with this. Yes. Right. So, so, how much of this fifty-one thousand dollars are we going to ask for from Vectran? Fifty-one thousand. Okay. I'm okay with that. Hope my gas bill don't go up. <laughs> <laughs> any I, other questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Yeah, I have a question on section three. The last line it says. Uh, the reason that the Shawnee Neighborhood Storm Sewer Phase 1 project has already been approved and completed. How does that pertain to the commercial street project? That doesn't. That, that has been changed. I'm not sure how that made it into the agenda. Okay. It has nothing to do with this No. Project. I didn't think so, but it's like it's on there, so it's a better check. Any other well, questions? Can we take that out? Yeah, you're going to have to amend it because this is what's before you to approve. So you can't. Um, uh, Sky, do you have the correct version with you? No, the correct version is on the server. I changed it after our meeting last week. Well, I think all you have to do is eliminate from after the city of Piqua eliminate the rest of the sentence. It's been, the resolution is being, is declared an emergency for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, and safety in the city of Piqua. Okay. Period. I, Period. Yeah, well, I think you always have to add the reason because public peace, health, and safety is too broad. So I think you would say um, for said reason that the commercial street project is already um, under construction. Right. Okay. Um, uh, so I make a motion that we amend it exactly how our law director just said. Second. So, how's that work? <laughs> Hold on one second. So section three would read, this resolution is declared an emergency for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, or safety in the city of Piqua for said reason that the commercial street project is already under construction. Okay. All right. And you seconded that, John? Yep. All in favor of the amended um, resolution, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The resolution stands as amended before us. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from the public on this amended resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move to adopt resolution R-148-18. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-149-18. A resolution appointing a member to the Miami County Community Action Council Board to fill an unexpired term. This uh, resolution simply appoints Janelle Ranley as our appointee to the Miami County Community Action Council Board. Okay. Any questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from our public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move we adopt resolution R-149-18. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution passes. And now we move to the public comment portion of the meeting. Do we have any public comment this evening? Good evening. My name is Bill Jacqua. I live at 607 for Sunset Drive. Um, I thought I was just, every time I come into the city of Pequa, I look at that overpass and I think what an improvement mm -hmm. and uh, just how nice it looks. And um, I know it was a lot of money and a lot of wrangling and, and uh, 
why I think it was really worth it. And then, then it causes me to kind of go back seven, eight years ago and when we were having troubles with our city manager and we had an interim manager and we had recalls the city commission and a lot of turmoil and things of that sort. And uh, so through sort of two waves of city commissioners and a new city manager, um, I just would like to say, I think that you guys have done a great job. Gary, I think you've done a fine job. I think most people should be very thankful that the city is in the position that it's in right now and uh, looks great for the future. So great. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your Thanks, praise. Appreciate Thank you. It. Any other public comment this evening? If not, we will move to our city manager's report. Thank you. I made just a few comments, and then we're going to have Chris Beezing uh, share with you some economic development updates. But first, uh, I hope there's some good news for everyone is East Ash Street uh, will be open by tomorrow night. Uh, that work is being... Uh, stop for the winter. There's still work to be done, but uh, the lane should be open and they'll be back to work uh, in the spring. That's uh, ODOT is this is an ODOT project and they've decided to uh, halt it for the for the winter. Uh, along those same lines, the State Route 66 bridge, which was uh, emergency work that was being done by ODOT, uh, will also be open on Friday, and uh, there's additional work they will do, but that will also occur in the spring. And finally, pertaining to streets, the roundabout should be open by midweek of next week. So uh, we should have all those things open. Uh, just a reminder that uh, offices are closed Thursday and Friday for the Thanksgiving holiday. And with that, uh, I'm going to call on Chris to give us an update on economic development. Thank you. So what I have for you this evening is a PowerPoint presentation and uh, just some um, information about the things that are happening in the development department, the ongoing activity as it relates to the many things happening in our community and the many positive things we see trending in our community, uh, just to give you some, some understanding of where we're at with these things. So if we could uh, cue the PowerPoint from the back room. That facility was done in 2001, I think. We're not going to be back next year. That's a good start. <laughs> oh, shit, I guess I'm going to squirt it on you. Firing. Mm. It's better than beer. I said that was better than beer. So throughout this presentation, uh, you'll hear me make reference to placemaking. Uh, this is because at the core of everything we do, we are creating place. Um, just to give you some understanding, at its uh, most basic level, placemaking is making livable places by thinking through the design of places and how they relate to one another, the experiences that place make possible, and the consequences place have on how we live our lives. So that gives you a little context for some of the thinking on uh, the things that we do and uh, the things we work on each and every day. In 2005, we established the development department uh, to conduct the planning and community and economic development activities vital to the community. And from that point forward, uh, we began to very intentionally engage citizens, businesses, community leaders, and stakeholders from all segments of the community to plan for the future of PICWA. Uh, in 2007, we updated the comprehensive plan, uh, completing the plan at PICWA document. And this was the first comprehensive plan update since 1972. The findings of the plan at PICWA comp plan have provided a foundation for the work that uh, lied ahead at the time and continues to lie ahead and has acted as a springboard for the succession of over 20 planning documents uh, that have identified and prioritized the needs of our community and helped us to prioritize where to invest our time, energy, and resources. Each of these planning documents produced through this process identify projects intended to lift up the quality of place and quality of life that defines the image and vitality of our community. 
So it was Fred Kent from uh, the Project for Public Spaces who summed it up this way. He said, placemaking is about turning a neighborhood, town, or city from a place you can't wait to get through into one that you never want to leave. So as we think about the uh, activities that happen from our office uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, much of our community development work focuses on securing funding sources and managing programs that aim to implement the recommendations of the previously referenced planning documents. Uh, and to date, we have secured uh, over $1 million uh, for the downtown riverfront placemaking initiative in particular. On the commercial side, as it relates to public sector activity, uh, we currently have four building owners that have received uh, nearly $23,000 in grants and $46,000 in loans uh, to complete uh, updates and repairs and facade improvements to their buildings through the downtown revitalization program. We have eight additional building owners that are currently um, in the queue and have projects out for bid. Uh, so we're very excited to see these, these funds that we've secured through the Community Development Block Grant Program being utilized. Previously, we've completed critical infrastructure projects using the Block Grant Program, including the automated reader technology uh, implementation and, of course, the Shawnee Storm Sewer Project. We also uh, administer and manage programs uh, that provide funding sources for businesses to start or grow, uh, including our micro enterprise loan program. Uh, to date, we've had six small businesses utilize the loan program uh, to the tune of almost $70,000. Likewise, with our USDA Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund, we've had four small businesses utilize this program, uh, taking advantage of $150,000 in funding to accomplish their goals. On the residential side, uh, we have the Community Housing Impact Preservation Program. Uh, we currently have 13 projects, uh, or we have completed 13 projects, totaling near, near $115,000 uh, in pr uh, residential property rehab or repairs. And you can see the photo there, just a snapshot of what a difference it makes in terms of the before and after uh, when folks have resources to be able to do some very basic property maintenance needs on their, uh, their property. We do a lot of other things in the community development sector as well. We essentially uh, serve as a clearinghouse for information related to available resources for both the commercial and residential property owners in our community. Uh, and this is, uh, as with all the programs we administer, relates to sustaining and fostering a strong sense of uh, quality of place in, in our community. And this is so important. Uh, as noted by Carol Coletta of Art Place, quality of place is a deep driver of talent and where it settles. You cannot separate the two. Talent and quality of place go hand in hand. So as we think about attracting workforce uh, and attracting millennials and attracting our youth back to the community, uh, I think that's a, a very relevant quote. Sorry, I'm behind on a slide here. So in many cases, the pri uh, public sector investment serves to drive private sector investment. Uh, in the past five years alone, we have seen over $65 million of private sector investment in both residential and commercial development activity. If you add the public school projects into that number, uh, it would be well over $100 million. And this does not include the uh, figures that you see in 2014 as it relates to the water treatment plant. Factor all those in and you're north of $150,000. In those instances of disinvestment, uh, we encourage property owners to comply with adopted uh, minimum property maintenance standards. Since June of 2016, we have opened 874 property maintenance cases. 608 of those cases have been voluntarily resolved. We have 266 cases that remain open. And of those 266, uh, 42 of them have received their initial notice, the first notice, uh, so they're still uh, have the opportunity to take care of things that need to be addressed. But unfortunately, we have 185 who uh, did not respond to the first notice and received a second notice, and uh, 29 who didn't respond to the first or second notice and have received a final notice, which basically says that we do need you to take action and address these matters, um, or there could be consequences as, such as going to court. And we have. 10 cases that are currently in, in the court, in front of the court. 
these things, again, are uh, critical in terms of the quality of place in our community and making sure that we uh, do those things necessary to, to maintain our properties to at least the minimum level uh, as it relates to the quality of place, the uh, investment in our neighborhoods and our property values and, and things of this nature. So on the economic development front, I'm sorry, I'm behind on slides again. On the economic development front, we continue to focus on implementing the recommendations and strategies in both our strategic planning document and also in the economic development strategy that we completed a couple years ago. We focus uh, a significant amount of time, energy, and effort on retention and expansion, getting out and visiting with our employers uh, and working with the existing companies to understand the challenges and opportunities they face. Uh, and making sure that we can connect them with the resource partners that are available to assist them when they have needs. The continued growth and success of our local businesses, many of whom have uh, been in our community for over 50, 70, or 100 years, is a top priority in the work that we do every day. We do also engage in business attraction. Uh, we develop and follow up on leads. Uh, that come through a variety of sources, both small and large. We meet with site selectors, and we uh, prepare for those opportunities. And frankly, the last bullet, uh, in many instances, we have a lot of work to do to prepare sites and or have the options on property uh, if we're to be competitive when those opportunities present themselves. Uh, we do fortunately, however, uh, realize successes in this area. Uh, Kettering Health Network, as you know, will be building a new building at US 36 and Looney Road in the very near future. And I would invite all of you to join myself and uh, most other city staff that will be in attendance at the December 10th, 1.30 p.m. groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, they're looking forward to having as many guests as possible, and we'd like to, like to see everyone in the community there. We also focus a considerable amount of effort in uh, staying uh, engaged with our workforce development partners. Uh, we work to align the needs of the local business community with the region's workforce development resources. So Edison State Community College does a terrific job with their Edison State Works program. Uh, the more recently announced Robinson Career Center uh, improvements that will be built. Uh, Upper Valley Career Center and their apprentice program and their adult ed programming. And the Pickle City School District and their su success bound program that they've been uh, putting together and executing are all great examples of how our resource partners are doing the things necessary to make sure that we continue to grow, sustain, and train up our workforce in the community and or attract the re uh, workforce necessary for our businesses. In that same spirit, uh, we continually focus on uh, engaging our strategic partners and resource partners to make sure we're aware of the services they have to offer. Uh, we focus on doing the many things necessary to provide the resources necessary to make PICWA a place where entrepreneurs can grow ideas into businesses, startups can flourish, and existing new businesses can grow and be prosperous. We stay in close contact with local and regional resource partners so that when a local business has a need, we can connect them with the resource partner that can provide the necessary assistance. Oops. So finally here, uh, we believe that given the opportunity, pe uh, people will choose to live where there is a sense of community pride, a strong sense of place, and a place that is willing to continue to reinvest in itself. And it was Rich Carlgaard uh, from Forbes who said, the most valuable resources in the 21st century is brains. Smart people tend to be mobile. Watch where they go, because where they go, robust economic activity will follow. And again, uh, that very much relates to the placemaking work that we're doing and the efforts that we put into community and economic development and the planning that supports that each and every day. So here's our team. And I thank you for your time and attention and we very much appreciate your interest and support in the things that we do. Thanks, Chris. Um, I just wanna mention that um, I think the efforts over the past few years on our economic development strategy are very much starting to pay off, and I think we're seeing some very good results as a result of that. So, be happy to answer any questions for you. Where are we at hiring a economic development or development director? Just, that application is just closed on the 19th, which was yesterday, and we we're starting the review of the applications. Were there a lot? I think we ended up with uh, 11 or 12. Okay. Um, the branding, quality of place, quality of life. 
Um, is that something we are, are, are going with? I like it. I'm, I'm yeah, that's uh, that's part of our whole economic development uh, strategy and tagline and everything. So that was developed, um, you know, back a few years ago as we Liking began it. moving into the placemaking uh, initiatives and so forth. So that's all part of it. Yes. Well, it, it, it hits the spot. Can you put the PowerPoint? Uh, is it going to go on the city website? We certainly can. Yeah. Put it on the website. Link. Put it on your LinkedIn. I want. I follow your LinkedIn every day. I do. I just look because you got a lot of good pictures of Piqua and the things that you're involved in, and, and I appreciate the, the high level activity that you, you yourself do and. Uh, if you put it on there, a lot of people will see it. Well, just to give you an example, some of the things we're putting on LinkedIn from uh, my LinkedIn place, we're getting as many as uh, over 5,000 reviews. I believe uh, at I look time. at it every so day. So it's, it's pretty incredible. So we're getting the word out very much about PICWA. Yes. And I yes. think it's starting to pay dividends on how people view PICWA. You know, and I like to remind everyone that a few years ago in the branding effort that uh, PICWA, you know, People that lived here and uh, said that Piqua was the armpit of the county. But of the county, uh, yeah. I don't think you can say that anymore. No. And I think that things have uh, changed immensely, and uh, we're moving down the right path. And I think the best years are yet to come for us. Wow. Appreciate all your efforts. I really do. Anything else? That was a great presentation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. A lot of good stuff going on, a lot of moving in the right direction, and the vision is definitely there, and it's nice to see things start to fall in place. So You, you can't always see the activity, but there is a lot of activity happening, and things are progressing in the right direction. Yeah, great. Good, good, good. Anything else from the questions from the commission for the city manager's report? If not, we will move to commissioner's comments. Um, Commissioner Lee, you want to start? Sure. Um, I want to um, thank Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity for uh, allowing me to come to their um, yearly scholarship um, drive. They offer a $1,000 scholarship to students from Piqua City, Troy, and Lima. Uh, I got to network with uh, some uh, the mayor of Sydney, the uh, a city Commissioner from Troy, the Chief of Staff of Lima, uh, and uh, great people. And then I met some very good students. The PICWA recipient uh, did it as a great GPA, as a good kid, uh, plays football, uh, very, very, very good representat representative of PICWA, and it was a good event. I had a good time. Presented their keynote speaker with the key to the city. Uh, his name was Brother Jones. Uh, he was their chief financial officer for the uh, uh, area, and he, a uh, great guy, told a great story. Um, and it's just nice to have that as a resource um, for students in uh, Piqua. So uh, appreciate going to that. Um, basketball season's starting, so things are going to get busy here for me. Um, I want everybody to have a um, great Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. Um, I hope the Cowboys lose. Uh, <laughs> I'm an Eagles fan. What can I say? And um, I, I do believe uh, in um, what Chris said, that the city is, and, and what the city manager said, the city's going in the right direction, in the great direction. A lot of stuff is not being seen, and that's why this update is, very important and as many people that can see the update and know the things that are going on will be important and i appreciate all the work behind the scenes that's not being seen or or even appreciated i appreciate them letting you know you. so and uh the comments um well it is being seen by some people because bill came up and and gave a, a very favorable review of the commission the city manager in the city and stuff like that is very much appreciated so thank you Thank you very much. And other than that, I've got nothing else to say. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Short? Um, two things. Uh, first off, happy Thanksgiving is coming up. Obviously, everybody have enjoy yourself with your family and have a great meal and enjoy the, the uh, fellowship. Also, I feel a little remiss in the fact that I forgot, that I neglected the Veterans Day in our last commission meeting. It was right after that. So I just want to thank all the veterans 
yep. that are in the city of Pickle and also that work for the city. We have quite a few and wonderful out, or people that are uh, not only police department, but fire department and different, di uh, different. city departments that represent the uh, military. So I want to thank them. And that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner vote. I'd like to congratulate uh, Captain Black. Yeah. On his uh, promotion. Uh, I was sitting here looking at him and I recognized him. He looks sort of like his grandfather. I didn't recognize his dad and I worked with his dad for 20 years. So kids grow up, don't they? And uh, I guess the adults do too, huh? No, the dads they do don't too. grow up, they just get old. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure uh, I know the family and he will do us a great job. Yeah, Congratulations. Jim Black, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Martin. I um, want to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. And one of the things that I've seen, been seeing a lot on Facebook is about people driving past school buses. So do me a favor, see a school bus, it's got the stop sign out, stop. Pretty simple thing to do. Um, I don't want to see any accidents happen in Piqua like has happened in some other communities where children have got killed because they were walking across the street and somebody wasn't paying attention to the school bus and hit the kids. So, and that's it. Thank you. I also want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving as well. It's hard to believe we are at the end of November. I am not sure where October and November went, but we are knocking on the door of the holiday season. And with that in mind, um, you do not need to look very far in our community to find holiday activities between the school. I know the senior breakfast is coming up, um, Christmas on the green. Uh, we've got the Christmas parade. We've got a variety of things. Um, there is a lot happening in our community, so I encourage you to check out the community calendar, Facebook, social media, the paper, a variety of places you can find out the activities that are happening. So um, it is the holiday season. And with that, I want you to, rem to remind you when you shop, please shop local because as you shop local, you are supporting your neighbors, you are supporting your community. And um, there, you know, we have such a wonderful variety of places to shop within our downtown area, especially in other parts of our community that are all our neighbors. So I encourage you that when you go out to buy your gifts this year to do so locally. And um, that is all I have as we, we now, I need a motion to, uh, to adjourn to executive session. We uh, will be um, doing our city manager's um, annual review. So I have a motion to do I move to go to the city uh, to executive session. Second. Okay, this has been moved and seconded. Can we have a roll call, please? Mayor Hines. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Commissioner Sherrod. Aye. Commissioner Vogt. Aye. <laughs> Okay, we are moving to executive session. <laughs> Thank you. Right.